Hi, Jill Heinerth here. Last summer, I had the incredible opportunity to work with a young scientist, Kayla Martin. And uh, as I was mentoring her, we decided that it would be a good idea to create a short video about the concept of bioaccumulation. And we told that story to help people understand how their freshwater resources are connected all the way to the ocean. So please enjoy this video. The Great Lakes watershed from Lake Superior eastward to the ocean includes 32,000 cubic kilometers of water, which is enough for each person on Earth to have two of their very own Olympic-sized swimming pools. It's home to 4,000 species of plants, fish, wildlife, and the world's third largest economy supporting more than 65 First Nations, two countries, eight states, and two provinces. This is where I grew up and where I live today. So I want to be a good steward for the watershed. As a diver and an environmental scientist, I notice things that are invisible to others. I'm going to follow the water's journey to discover how small actions and unseen forces can have a big impact. The Great Lakes represents more than a quarter of the world's fresh water supply. West of Lake Superior, the water begins a 3,500 kilometer journey to the sea. Roughly 5,000 tributaries, small lakes, rivers, streams, flow into larger bodies of water. Here in the forest, we can see groundwater bubbling up and entering a nearby river. And although this water looks crystal clear, it can carry invisible contaminants like fertilizers, industrial waste, and stormwater that transmits specks of car tires, fuel, and microplastics. Wow, this is really beautiful. This is plankton. These tiny creatures form the base of our food chain. So plankton have another ecosystem service. They produce over 50% of the oxygen that we breathe every day. This makes the ocean the lungs of the planet. Small fish and crustaceans eat these microorganisms. Larger fish, Birds and terrestrial animals eat these smaller fish. This starts a process called bioaccumulation, where toxic substances build up in greater amounts further up the food chain. When I dive in Lake Ontario, I'm seeing signs that the watershed has been impacted. The historic abundance is gone. Invasive species have moved in and it has created many problems downstream, which then affect the estuaries and out into the oceans. This is caused by industrial wastes, agriculture practices, discharge from ships, and humanity's activities on the landscape. Here in Esipit, in the territory of the Montanay Innu people, the fresh water meets salt in the St. Lawrence estuary the largest and most productive estuary in the world. Estuaries are important feeding and nursery habitats for commercially and ecologically important fish, invertebrates, and migratory birds.
These are filter feeders. These are actually animals anchored to the seafloor, and they will eat anything that drifts by as long as it's small enough. If the plankton is contaminated, it transfers toxins up the food chain. And if the population of plankton declines, fish and invertebrates will not have enough to eat. But worst of all, bioaccumulation turns a beautiful whale into toxic waste after it dies. One of my dreams is to swim with a beluga whale, but they are extremely difficult to find. The small endangered population in the St. Lawrence is affected by bioaccumulation, food scarcity, and is also threatened by noise pollution. Belugas are chatty. In fact, most people call them canaries of the sea. Whales use sounds to echolocate food and to speak to one another. When I'm underwater, I can hear the sound of whales, but they are often drowned out by the sound of boats and freighters. When a beluga whale dies, we have to consider them as toxic waste because of all the toxins that have accumulated in their system. To see such a beautiful creature be considered toxic waste is absolutely horrible, which is why I hope that my work here in the St. Lawrence Estuary will help people to realize the impact of their actions. All our actions can affect our health, our wildlife, and our very future. It's so important to think about every little thing that you're doing and how they can impact our world. Thanks for joining me at Into the Planet videos. Don't forget to click the links and subscribe. You'll be supporting our channel.